We're going to review the vertebrae, the parts of the vertebrae, the segments of the vertebral column, and then look at a few other structures like the ribs and the sternum in this video. First, let's look at a, the general structure of a vertebrae. In the anterior portion of the vertebrae is what we call the body. It's what we call the body of the vertebrae. The opening you see where the spinal cord will go through is called a vertebral foramen. And on the posterior region of the vertebrae is what we call the spinous process. So we have the body. The opening is called the vertebral foramen where the spinal cord goes through and in the posterior is going to be the spinous process. Now we're going to look at the segments or the regions of the vertebrae or vertebral column that protects the spinal cord. The first is the cervical. There are seven cervical vertebrae. There are 12 thoracic vertebrae and five lumbar vertebrae. And then a little later on I'll show you the sacrum and coccyx which is below that, which is below the lumbar. This picture here represents the first two cervical vertebrae, so right below the skull. You're responsible for their specific names. So this is the atlas, so this is where those occipital condyles from the, from the skull will articulate with the atlas. So if you remember atlas held up the world, your world is your head, and so the vertebrae, the atlas, is the first cervical vertebrae. So if I put this on the test, and I put it on the table and I ask you what it is. If you say cervical vertebrae, you're only getting partial credit. It is specifically the atlas. Below the atlas, the second cervical vertebrae is called the axis. Things turn on an axis. So you got this little nubby thing here. And so the skull actually turns on this axis. So this is the second cervical vertebrae. And again, you need to know it by name. So seven, first seven are cervical, next 12 are thoracic, Next five are lumbar. So I'm going to skip ahead here. So this would be the last lumbar vertebrae. And then you have the sacrum, which is fused vertebrae, and the coccyx, which is the most inferior part of the vertebral column. So sacrum and then the coccyx. Now let's go back and look at the thoracic cage, the bones and cartilage that are involved with that. First of all, in the anterior portion of your chest, this whole bone is called the sternum. There's a few areas and structures you need to know on that sternum. The first one is up here on the uh, most superior portion of the sternum, and that is called the jugular notch. If you stick your finger, find that bone, and gently stick your finger in there, you can actually feel that jugular notch. The top portion of the sternum is the manubrium, with the jugular notch being on the top there. Then you come down to the inferior region of the sternum, and that is the xiphoid process. That's the structure when you're doing CPR that you don't want to put pressure on. So that's why you put two fingers down, so the palm of your hand will end up somewhere in this area, because you don't want that xiphoid process to fracture. So again, the whole bone is the sternum. We have the jugular notch on the superior portion, manubrium up here and on the inferior portion of the sternum is the xiphoid process. You also have the ribs that you can see here. You will also notice that the ribs do not directly attach to the sternum. They attach through cartilage, which is called the costal cartilage. When you learn the ribs, you have to remember that there are seven true ribs, five false ribs, and the last two false ribs are floating ribs. Now what that means is true ribs directly attach from the costal cartilage to the sternum. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven directly attach. So those are your true ribs, and again there are seven pairs. And then you see the false ribs where the costal cartilage actually comes together, right? not individually, but comes together as a whole to attach to the sternum. So your false ribs are these three here, and then the two floating pairs, which you can kind of see in the background here. The floating ribs don't attach to the sternum at all. Okay? So seven true, five false. Out of those two, out of those five false ribs, two pairs are the floating ribs. So those are the structures of the vertebrae and the thoracic cage. So again, go ahead and review that. Practice what you need to so you're ready for the test.